following up my first look video of these new Garmin Rally power meter pedals, today's video is a deeper dive after a few weeks of real world use. There were a few surprises that I encountered only once these were installed and configured on the bike. Now there's a number of topics covered throughout this video, so I'll put chapters in the timeline below. So if you need to jump to any particular section to get the information you're looking for, that's how to go about it. Kicking things off with a technical overview of these pedals, it is the fifth generation power meter pedal from Garmin. There's a full mechanical and electronic redesign. There's a new internal rechargeable battery with up to 90 hours of ride time. It's probably the biggest change with these pedals. They've moved the battery from the pedal body into the spindle. The road version, SPDSL and Look Keo, and off-road version using SPD, all get pedal body redesigns too. They now have easy swap pedal bodies, so you can go from road to off-road back to road using the same spindle and different pedal bodies. That only takes a few minutes. There's oval chain ring support. This is new due to the addition of a gyroscope. There's a secure pairing mode, which is optional. There's travel mode. Connection types with these, there's three types, amp plus, Bluetooth, and secure Bluetooth. Accuracy, as you'd expect, plus or minus 1%. And the data you get from these is power, cadence, left-right balance with the dual-sided version, and cycling dynamics. There's also force, but we'll have a chat about force later in the video. Onto the accuracy testing, and I can confirm Garmin have knocked it out of the park when it comes to passing all my testing protocols. Those being overall accuracy, both indoors and out. That's a pass, I had no problems at all there. Residual torque tests, where I'd sprint at 1100, 1200, 1300 watts on a good day, and then check for any offsets just after that, which is a problem with some power meters. No issues with these doing that. The PCO test, where pressing on the pedals a little differently can cause some problems with some power meter pedals, namely the look power meter pedals. No issues with these. Workout consistency, that was also a pass, where after 45 minutes to an hour of interval testing indoors, I'd return back to the same initial tests to see if there's been any change or drift. No issues there. Maximum cadence test, I got these up to 199 RPMs indoors. No problems there at all. And the sprint issue that I had with previous generation power meter pedals from Garmin, where doing a maximum power sprint, really ripping the bike side to side, would cause the cadence sensor to read zero, therefore power reading zero. No issues at all trying to repeat that with these. That was a pass. So all good news there from all of my testing which I'll now balance out with covering the price. Now this is in US dollars. The Rally RS and RK versions for road come in at $1,200 US and the off-road versions come in at $1,300 US. There's also some bundles where you buy a set of spindles and two pedal bodies. So if you have multiple bikes and want to do the quick swap, you can do that too. Now, these are around $400 to $500 US more than the Asioma Pro dual sensing pedals. And for good reason, there's going to be a lot of comparisons with the new Garmin Rallies and the Asioma Pro series. They are so very similar in almost every way, except for price. Here in Australia, the Rally 110 models are effectively the same price as the Asioma Pro dual-sided offerings. And when it comes to spares and rebuild kits, the single pedal body for the Rally XCs retails for $300 US and the RSRK retails for $200 US. In comparison, because we're going to do a lot of comparisons in this video with the Faveros, the single sided pedal body replacement for the Asioma Pro RS and XC comes in at $57 US. Now factoring in shipping, tariffs, taxes, there's still a very big difference in price there. Some more commentary on the pricing and positioning. In recent times, we've seen Garmin opting for the premium price positioning on their new cycling related products. Those being the Neo 3M, the Alpine Grade Simulator, the new Garmin Edge 550 and 850 bike computers, and now the Rally X10 power meter pedals. Now you could argue that the 3M is an absolute beast of a trainer, and it is. And the Garmin Edge units are unparalleled for features, sensor compatibility and customization. But when it comes to power meters, at a basic level, they're relatively simple in what they provide. It's how they do it that's complex. Now, power meters tell you how hard you're pedaling the bike and your cadence. Now, while there are a few other metrics that they report, at a very basic level, these aren't anywhere near as complex as a bike computer. This does make it a little harder to justify the rally pricing against some of the proven alternatives out there. And this isn't just a Garmin rally pricing issue either. The SRM X power pedals are even more expensive again. So if you're deep down the research rabbit hole of deciding which power meter to go with, let's dive even deeper with some hands-on with these. Okay, going with the parallel unboxing of the XC210s and the RS210s. Both pedals ship with Garmin's own cleats. So we have the SPD cleats there on screen. We have some pedal washers. We have the charge heads and USB-C to USB-C charge cables. Also some reflectors and some manuals. On the left, SPDSL road pedals. Again, shipping with all the charging hardware and some 4.5 degree float cleats from Garmin themselves. All right, that's everything you get in the box. Now a closer look at these pedals, they don't turn very freely in the hand. Hopefully they free up after a little bit of use. They're smooth, but they just 
don't turn as freely as I'd like. Measurement wise, no difference there between the previous generation other than a lower stack height, 11.5 mil on the new XC210s. Weight wise, 438 for the XC210s, previous generation 200s coming in at 440. And as comparison, because yes, there's going to be a lot of comparisons with these, the Favero Asiama Pro MX2 coming in at 384 grams on the scales. So quite a bit of difference there between the competition. A closer look at the road pedals, and again, very stiff to turn, smooth, but stiff. And measurement wise, exactly the same, just verifying that there. So Q factor or pedal Q factor, 53 mil, standard width or 55 if you use a two mil washer, and stack height of 12.2 millimeters, exactly the same as the RS200s. On the scales, RS210s coming in at 312 grams on my scales, previous generation, coming in at 319 grams, 320 grams. And again, the comparison with the Fivero Asiama Pro RS2s, these rock the scales at 247 grams. That is what I would consider significantly lighter than these Rally RS210s and RS200s. On the bike installation, very straightforward with a little bit of grease on the thread and the pedal washer in place making sure they're correctly threaded by hand first. And the new Rally X10s have two positions, or I guess four positions. You can put the 15 mil open wrench in to snug those down nice and tight as per spec. All right, job done. Now as pedals, these are absolutely rock solid. They're well built and I had no issues over the last few weeks riding with these. There was no squeaking experience with the XC versions, although that does have a lot to do with the shoe type due to the pedal shoe cleat interface with the SPD platform. The levels of engagement I found were fine. I'm usually at around 50% tension, which is still a lot to snap in and snap out of. The one initial issue that I'm hoping works its way out of is the lack of spin on the pedals, which we saw in the unboxing and a close look here on the bench just before. They do seem very, very tight, even after a few hundred Ks. They're very smooth, but they're just not free to spin. Now, I recall previous generations of these were the same out of the box, but did free up over time. Not really an issue with SPD with their dual-sided clip-in, more of an issue with road pedals, where ideally the pedal will drop down when you're not clipped in, so you can clip in a lot easier. Now, a side note, I have been using the Shimano multi-entry SPD cleats with the XC210s, no problems there. I'll look at covering these in another video soon. Onto connection types, and there are two types of connections to these pedals, an open connection or a secure connection. With the open connection, you have AMP Plus and Bluetooth, pretty much the same as all other power meters on the market. And then there's the secure Bluetooth connection, which is Bluetooth being encrypted and authenticated. It's unique at the moment to the X10 series. And when it comes to connection modes, there's two connection modes that these can be set to. Secure connections only, which is secure Bluetooth, and open connections, which is AMP Plus, Bluetooth, and secure Bluetooth. Devices that support secure Bluetooth at this point in time are the Edge X40, the Edge X50, and the Edge Explore 2 Garmin wearables. There's lots of support in those because the Garmin heart rate sensor has had secure Bluetooth for quite some time. No other manufacturer head units at this time support secure Bluetooth. So if you have a Wahoo Element, Hammerhead Karoo, Edge X30 series, you'll need to use an open connection method such as Amp Plus or Bluetooth. If you have an Edge X40 or X50, you can only use Amp Plus or secure Bluetooth. There's no open Bluetooth connection to these units. Phew, okay, there's a lot to cover there. So when pairing to secure Bluetooth with these, it's not as easy as you'd expect if you're familiar with device pairing. You've got to use the Connect Mobile app to set the pedals to secure pairing mode for that initial pairing. Alternatively, you can remove the left hand pedal from the bike, hold it with the threads pointing up for two seconds, then to the side, then down, and then back to the side to get them to the initial secure pairing mode. And no, I'm not kidding, but it's good to know you can set that without using the app. Now, do note that's only for the initial Bluetooth secure pairing. It's not for every ride. I think this is a case where regulations and things have really gotten in the way of uh, ease of use. However, we move on deeper again. One of the two features that the Rally X10 series has, forced data and pedal IQ smart calibration. They only work with secure Bluetooth connections. This means the force data and pedal IQ smart calibration only work with select Garmin devices. Looping back, that means these features will not work with Wahoo, Hammerhead, Coros, Brighton, Machine, or other bike computers. Even older model Garmin Edge units aren't compatible with those features. So yeah, there's a whole other discussion to have here around existing open connection standards not being extensible enough to add new features, adherence to regulations. Let's just sidestep that for now though. The good news is there is the full suite of cycling dynamics that does work over AMP Plus to any bike computer that supports that. I'm gonna revisit secure Bluetooth a little later in the video because there's something I've uncovered with that too. 
Diving into the force data that's reported from these pedals. Now using a compatible Garmin Edge unit connecting via secure Bluetooth, you have the option to display and record force. Now this is reported from these in newtons. This isn't torque, which is reported in newton meters, which some people may already be using as a metric to measure their efforts. So with power or watts being the outcome of the effort you're doing, force or torque shows how the power is being produced or the muscle load per pedal stroke. Now, back in my day, a coach would prescribe strength efforts with a target power and say, do them at a low cadence. So you're having to put more force into the pedals during each pedal stroke to load up your legs. Now using force in newtons as a metric is a way I guess in simplifying and quantifying that, but to date the most commonly adopted metric for this has been torque. There are a number of Connect IQ apps that display torque from almost any power meter. The Wahoo Element head units have a number of torque data fields that also work with any power meter. Garmin say they're using force in newtons, not torque in newton meters, as this allows you to compare the force you are generating right at the pedal between multiple different bikes regardless of the variations in crank length between bikes. Now, while interesting and correct, the difference isn't a lot. So at 50 RPM at 300 watts using 170 mil cranks, 57 Newton meters equals 335 Newtons. Keeping everything the same, but swapping in 172.5 cranks, 57 Newton meters equals 330.4 Newtons. So is this just potato, potato, tomato, tomato? Hmm, well, it depends. Maybe this is a superior metric over Newton meters, but my user experience with force wasn't ideal. Using force in newtons results in a number that during an effort where oxygen to the brain could be limited can easily be mistaken for power. With the force data shown on screen during a number of rides, I was a lot of the time seeing a number that looked to me like a broken power meter. Looking at torque, on the other hand, for the same effort, that value was significantly less than power and less than cadence too, so I really knew what I was looking at. So my take on Garmin's force metric, well, it's limited to these pedals, it's limited to certain Garmin edge units, and you have to learn a new metric. So that's a no from me at this point. I would choose torque any day over this. Torque is more accessible across different power meters. Torque data is also available with these pedals already. And the differences in torque or newtons are negligible. Nobody's riding 165 and 175 cranks across different bikes with a force for the same torque is a little greater. Hmm, okay, I rest my case on this one for now. Quickly touching on Pedal IQ Smart Calibration. Now it's a new feature that will give you a friendly reminder to zero offset your power meter under a certain number of circumstances that may require it. Now with auto calibration enabled on these pedals, that feature effectively is redundant out of the starting gate, which is a good thing. Look, this is a nice to have, I guess, but it only works over secure Bluetooth and only on select Garmin devices. And speaking of secure Bluetooth, this leads me to a little issue that I've observed using secure Bluetooth on edge bike computers. After my first ride using secure Bluetooth with these pedals, I noted the overall power wasn't matching the other power meter on the bike as closely as previous rides when I was using Amp Plus. Now digging a little more into the data, I could see the rally holding on to the last known reported value when I was coasting. Yep, classic sticky watts, and this wasn't happening over Amp Plus. Now to confirm what I was seeing with that ride, I performed another ride where I was paired to the same rally power meter with Amp Plus with one edge bike computer and secure Bluetooth with another edge unit. The results were that steady state data was fine, as close as can be expected, but when I was coasting, oh my, that's a problem. And that's a big problem because it inflates averages, normalized power, TSS, especially in stop start riding, which is exactly where the XC pedals are meant to shine. This issue has been reported to Garmin, they acknowledged it, and they're looking at getting that resolved. So stay tuned on this. And finally, covering off the data charging and some testing I've done with that. So it is USB-C to USB-C charging that does work with all charges that I have tested it with. Pedals themselves have the four connection contact points. So that is a data connection interface. There's 32 megabytes of storage per pedal. Yes, megabytes, not gigabytes. And that's potentially useful for debugging and updates using Garmin Express. Although these pedals do update wirelessly too. Okay, so on to the wrap up and overall summary of my experience with these pedals over the last few weeks. They're accurate, they work very well as pedals, on road, off road, indoors. 90 hours of battery is fantastic. That's three times the battery life of the SRM X power pedals. And with that, that's three main questions answered and that's all some people are gonna to wanna to know, which is fine. But they are expensive on a number of fronts and way more than the alternative power meter pedals out there. And there's some limitations with those new unique features requiring the use of secure Bluetooth, which only works with later model Garmin units at this point. So there's no question these are going to be compared a lot to the Asioma Pro series. And if the comments on the first look videos and other media releases on these pedals are anything to go by, informed bike tech aficionados have not held back on that to date. For what I do, I am super happy to see Garmin iron out the issues they had with their previous pedals, and having better products on the market is a good thing. 
These are without a doubt the best power meter pedals the Garmin have made to date. However, because there's always a however, the premium price tag on these and these tipping the scales a little bit more than the alternatives will have people buying those alternatives. It's as simple as that. But what I'm wondering is, will we see these on Garmin sponsored pro teams? A lot of them are unhappy on Shimano power meters and their teams do have Garmin partnerships. Hmm. I'll be keeping an eye out for these in the Pro Tour. Okay, and with that, that's a wrap on these. As always, likes, subscribes here on the channel really help keep things moving along. And thanks for watching.